evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about how things actually move in circles and I'm going to start relating formulae of tangential speed and tangential velocity and acceleration to this. Now how an object moves in a circle, so we'll start with how objects move linearly. So if I'm moving linearly to move me, okay, at the moment I have got a constant force of zero, a constant speed of zero and I've got no resultant force. To accelerate me, to speed me up, I need something pulling on me. I need a resultant force acting on me. And this boils down to Newton's uh, three laws. The first law states that if an object has no resultant force acting on it, it will move at a constant velocity. And zero is a constant velocity. If I have a force acting on it, I will accelerate in the direction of the resultant force. Now this is the important part about circular motion. Circular motion has something known as a centripetal force. Not centrifugal, centripetal. And this is a force that is pulling an object towards itself while the object is actually moving at right angles. So take this for example. The forces are acting, the weight and the tension, but when it moves, when I move it, at the bottom, the motion here to move this way is at right angles to the force. And this brings us to something quite important about um, terminology and the idea of what angular, speed, uh, um, angular velocity and tangential velocity. Okay, so if I just quickly draw a circle on here for you. Here's the circle. Here's the centre of the circle. What's actually happening? is that and this object was quite happily moving in a nice straight line here. And it's quite happily with moving with a velocity of v. However, a force is pulling it inwards this way. Which means this object will accelerate inwards. So this object will accelerate inwards. But this acceleration is not working. Oops. Draw a bit of a better diagram for that. There we go, that's better. It would accelerate inwards. But that acceleration and that velocity are at right angles to each other. So this acceleration will have no effect on this velocity at all. So when we're down in this position here, my tangential velocity is still the same. But again, I'm going to be pulled inwards. And you can see how this will continue. And you make a circle that way. Okay, and that's what's actually happening at every point. But what's happening is this object is having a velocity this way, but acceleration is pulling it this way. So it's going to keep moving into the centre of the circle. And this force here is called a centripetal force. Okay. This velocity is called a tangential. Velocity. And if a rope or something was to break at that point, that is the velocity it would shoot at out, shoot out at. Okay. So that's really useful to understand about what these terminology is, but we need to start relating things to each other if we're going to understand how we can calculate forces and speeds, and we can use these formula all the way. So in a previous video, I spoke about this letter omega, and omega is angular velocity. And this is how much we're spinning in a time. Okay, I'm going to try and relate this to the tangential velocity, v. Okay, so v, okay, is of course displacement over time. And if I go back to this, you can see that of course my direction is constantly changing. So I'm only going to look at the magnitude of this. So I'm looking at the magnitude, so I'm actually looking at the speed. You will be calling it the tangential velocity, but properly, it really should be known as the tangential speed. And the reason it's the tangential speed, as you can see from my diagram here, is that it is at a tangent to the radius. And if I drew my velocity vector here, 
it will be at right angles to my radius. So let's actually look about how much it would do in one spin round. So in one spin, my distance I would travel would be the circumference of a circle. And that is 2 pi r. 2 pi r divided by time. And as you can see here, this bit here is omega. So I can write tangential speed as omega r. Okay, now I can acceleration, acceleration is a relationship between velocity and um, velocity and the uh, time, so it's the, it's the next one down, it's velocity divided by time, but I can't really do that here, not without some more complicated mathematics that you don't need to know. What you do need to know is the formula for acceleration, and this is the acceleration that is pulling it back in, okay? So working in the direction of what that force was. So you can see here, it's working in the direction of this force. This one is working in the direction of that force. And if I drew this one on, this force here, as you can see, it is working in the direction of that force there. So acceleration, is v squared over r. So the acceleration, this is the centripetal acceleration. So this is the acceleration that is caused by the centripetal force. This is the acceleration back into the center of the circle. It can be related by the formula v squared. So this is the tangential velocity, or tangential speed, over the radius. I can then, if I wish to, find this formula here. I can stick this formula that I solved up here into this, and I could have omega squared r squared over r, which would leave me with omega squared r. So these formulae here, this omega is theta over time, or 2 pi over t. This tangential velocity, this tangential speed, the speed at any point, um, here and acceleration. Now it's really important just to make a note that this is constant magnitude. Okay, so it's constant around a circle. So wherever I took it, okay, round this circle, the velocity would be the same. The speed, the magnitude of this velocity would be the same. The direction would be different, but the magnitude would be constant. Okay, centripetal acceleration again will also be const, um, would be constant around the circle because without a, uh, without a constant a, you would not get constant v. So centripetal uh, centripetal force is constant around the circle as well as centripetal acceleration. Okay, what I'm going to do in my next video is I'm going to talk about how we can talk about centripetal force, and we're actually going to use Newton's second law to be able to relate this to uh, centripetal force equations.